In this lesson, we'll modify headers and footers in a layout. First, I'll open the layout we created and modified in the previous lessons. I'll click File, Open, Layout, and select My Layout. Next, I'll select the Headers and Footers pane either by clicking the right arrow at the top of the pane twice or by clicking the down arrow and selecting Headers and Footers from the drop-down list. Although there are some exceptions, for the most part, when we talk about headers and footers, we are talking about text that appears above the first line of the transcript or below the last line of the transcript. You can add up to seven headers or footers in addition to your page number. Let's begin with the page number. When you create or modify a page number, you will click Insert Field to select a page number field in the format you prefer, for example, page number 123. You can also add words or symbols before or after the field if desired. For example, if I wanted the word page followed by the page number on every page, I could click the header footer text field and then type the word page before the page number field. And when I click apply, you can see that the word page will appear before each page number. If I want the page number to be a different font type or style or size, I can click the font button and choose how I want the page number to appear. At the horizontal prompt, I'll select where the page number should appear, aligned to the left or right margins, or centered. Just a reminder, as you learned back in the paragraph setup lesson, the left and right margins that you set for the default paragraph style dictate the margins that will be used for alignment for headers and footers. If you prefer the page number to be centered, you have three centering options between the left and right margin, centered on the page based on the width of the page as selected in Page Setup, or centered between the left and right box lines also as set in Page Setup. Then I can set the vertical position. I can measure the position of the page number from the top edge of my transcript page and select exactly and type that number. If the page number should appear on the same line as the box line, either at the top or the bottom, I can click top of box or bottom of box and when I apply, the page number would appear on the box line. This last vertical option is only used in a few places, particularly in the state of New York. Selecting Running Header means that the header will appear on the first transcript line rather than above the transcript text. Now I will select what I want for my page number, which is the number by itself, without the word page, horizontally positioned on the right margin, and vertically positioned exactly at 0.5 inches from the top of the page. I'll click Apply and my page number now looks exactly the way I want it to. Next, suppose I need a header at the top of all of my transcript pages that says Deposition of and the name of the witness from that job. To add this header, I'll use the same steps as I did for my page number header, but with a different header entry. First, I'll select the header line that I plan to edit. In the Header Text field, I'll type the text Deposition of. Now, the name of the witness will change every job, of course, so just like in an include file, I'll click Insert Field and then select the Witness User Defined field as the placeholder for the witness's name. I want this header text to be in italics and the same size text as the transcript text, so I'll click Font. And I'll change the font style to italic and the font size to 12. The horizontal position of this header should be aligned with the left margin, so that's already properly set. The vertical position isn't quite right. I want the header text for both the header and the page number to appear to be on the same line, so I'll use the same measurement. It was half an inch, or 0 .50 for the page number, so I'll enter 0 .50 here for the Deposition of Witness header. Now I'll click Apply to see how that looks. It's looking good. Okay, one last item. 
Let's say I need a footer at the bottom of every page that advertises the name of the firm, Outstanding Reporting Services. The steps are the same as before. First, I'll click the next available header line. And by the way, it doesn't matter that it says header rather than footer. What makes a footer a footer is where it's vertically positioned. I'll go ahead and type the text, and then select the font style and type and size that I want. Set the horizontal position. I want this centered under the box line, so I'll select Centered on Box. And now, here's how it becomes a footer instead of a header. Based on my measurements, the footer is in between 10 and a quarter and 10 and a half inches from the top edge of the page. I'll split the difference and call it 10.37 and enter that amount here and see how that looks when I click Apply. That looks pretty good to me. And that's it. Now that I've set values for paragraph setup, page setup, and headers and footers, my layout is ready to use. When I translate a job, I can select My Layout as the layout for that job, and the text will appear formatted just as it appears here in the preview window in the Layout function. Now I'll save the changes and close this file by right-clicking the tab and selecting Save and Close. You're ready to practice modifying the values for headers and footers in a layout. Go into the training user and follow the directions for Exercise 4 in the Layout Practice document.